Michel. All right, what's up, Turtle Riders? What's going on there? Why is this camera all fucking freaking wacky? Give me one sec here to uh, fix this camera. Is that better? No, no, we don't want that. We want it like this. How does that work? No, that's not good. Let's try it like that. Good enough for now. We'll fix that in one second. But anyway, what's up, Turtle Riders? Give me one second while I share this stream on the various facebook pages we run uncle turtle boy and turtle boy sports go ahead and like both of those if you haven't already the uncle turtle boy page we're at seventeen thousand two hundred. climbing uh turtle boy sports facebook page is actually getting kind of close to that so go ahead and give that one a like too it's up to like twelve thousand four hundred something uh and nope that's not what we want where'd it go hold on we want this. Boom. And. All right. Post. Where'd it go? There it is. All right. We live. Someday I'll have somebody that does this for me. But I dream. We live. And. Copy that. There we go. Post. And then we'll put it on Twitter. So also follow me on Twitter. You can find me on there at, at Dr. Turtle Boy or at Turtle Boy Phone. Either one of those will do. Okie dokie. So let me just fuck with this camera for one moment. Hold on. Did that do it? It's a little better. Why am I like on the side? It looks like I'm freaking funny. About that. How's that? That's better than nothing, right? No, this is the one blocking away then. Okay. Move that and then move this. What the hell is this thing right here? Whatever. Okay. So, uh, welcome to the show, ladies and gentlemen. This is my last show. Just a reminder that I am uh, not last show ever, but last uh, show on the YouTube stream before I head off to the West. Going to Montana, taking the family there. Is that a little crisper? Yeah. Okay, cool. Headed to Montana. Uh, I do have someone house sitting, so no shenanigans. Okay, in case any of you haters are out there thinking about something like that. That's like my life right now. I can't even, uh, you know, talk about vacations because assholes will show up in my house. But no, I do have people watching my house, so don't even think about it, douchebags. Um. And also, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, why don't you go ahead and smash that subscribe button for me. We're up to 16,000, almost 16,500 people. It's slowed down a little bit. It comes and goes, but uh, go ahead and do that. Um, and yeah, cool. All right. So if you guys like the program, I'm here every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday night. I won't be here this Thursday, Saturday, or next Tuesday night because I'll be on vacay with the family. Uh, I won't bring receipts or anything like that. Sorry, Michelle Olson. Uh, it's kind of none of your business where I go on family vacation. This is pissing me off, this camera. I want to get it straight. I want to get it like that. How about that? Is that better? That's pretty cool. Right now, I'm nice and centered. A little bit. Push over a tad. But then what's this thing? This thing's going to piss me off all night. If I move that, what the hell is this? What is that thing in the corner? What is this? What is you? Is it you? Is it this? Oh, it's this. There we go. Problem solved. Okay, cool. Okie dokie, folks. Um, oh, now we're good. Now we're good. We're all ready to rock here now. So um, we do have some good stuff to here to talk about tonight. One thing I want to talk about uh, on our last show before I leave is uh, a story that I just read about. I saw it in the news like a couple minutes ago and it's freaking insane. And we just need to talk about it for a moment. Let me see if I can pull it up here. It's out of Drake Massachusetts. And again, if you guys come to, uh, you know, if you subscribe to the YouTube channel, you get all the content first. So that's the beauty of it. Okay. All right. So this is, um, a story out of, uh, Drake it in the Lowell area. So a woman here, 
Her name is Heidi. I don't want to pronounce the last name wrong. Kimborowitz. Pretty simple. Uh, her son was murdered, shot uh, a couple months ago, or back in, I think it was September. His name was Adrian. Uh, again, I don't want to say the last name wrong. Kimbro, Kimbrowix. I apologize for mangling that one. But uh, like I said, he was shot uh, by a guy named Christian LeMay, an 18-year-old who I believe was a Drake. I don't know if he's a Drake at high school student, but he's definitely from Drake. And he was paralyzed for a month. And he was on a ventilator. He was unconscious. And he died a month after that. He goes by C. Mello. Now, let me show you two entries here into the Drake at high school yearbook, if I may. Let me get them first. There they are. Boom. And let's get this audience up. Thank you very much, KB, all day for the vacation uh, notice there. Yeah, again, if you guys like the program and you like to donate to what we do, uh, feel free to uh, smash that uh, dollar sign signal. That's called Super Chat. You can put whatever message you want with that on your Super Chat. What's with the audience? We used to have like 300 every show. It seems to have disappeared a little bit. Am I losing my touch? I don't know. But anyway, okay, so it's Kim Borowitz. Kim Borowitz, I was just notified. Kim Borowitz. So this is, uh, let me show you guys what uh, the, the yearbook, uh, two images that appeared in the Drake at High School yearbook that I just, I'm blown away that this happened. Blown away. So this girl's name, Alexandra Irwin. I guess these are senior pictures. You know what I mean? You get your pictures taken in the yearbook and you're like, you know, me and my boys hanging out at the res and the football team. And, you know, you do your initials and all that stuff. Give a shout out to your girlfriend. It's a senior yearbook, right? That's what you do. Well, not this girl. This girl decided Alexandra Irwin from Drake it, who looks like a, you know, like somebody in a gap commercial or something. Growth is painful Change is painful, but nothing is as painful as these four years at DHS. Oh, honey, honey, you have no idea <laughs> if you think if you think high school is painful. Oh, <laughs> that's all you. Okay, if that's all you have to say about your high school experience. Something's wrong with you. Thank you, KCP. I appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, but she also says, "Shout out to the real ones. Shout out to the real ones." JM, JC. C M N L D S M B A H X F H P and then free mellow. That's what they call this gentleman, Christian LeMay, who is uh, arrested for murdering this young man back in September. And this was got into the yearbook. It got into the yearbook. I swear to God. Now this is the other one. It's just Jean Carlos Santiago has nothing to say about high school. His a whole high school experience there. So what did, what are your favorite memories from high school, son? What can you tell us about your uh, glory days at Drake at High? Hashtag free mellow. That's it. That, that's all he has to su summarize his entire existence at the high school as a student there. So that's, that's uh, okay. So I understand kids are douchebags and they're going to do stuff like this. But, who the heck are the adults that allowed this to happen? That's the real question because your books have advisors and stuff like that. So let's read the rest of the story. And again, from the streets of Drake, it like chill out. You're from Drake it homie. Chill out. So it says, um, he was one of the people who shot him minutes earlier. Um, so he was, uh, so Lowell police found Adrian Kimborowitz, laying on his back on Sutherland street on September 26th with a gunshot wound to the right side of his chest. Police reports filed in Lowell district court say, uh, Kimborowitz told police little except that quote, C Mello was one of the people who shot him minutes earlier. Kimborowitz spent the next month unconscious on a ventilator and likely paralyzed the 2020 yearbook at 2021 yearbook at Drake at high included two students photographs captioned with quote, free mellow. An apparent reference to the 18-year-old Drake man, Christian C. Mello LeMay, who police allege shot Kimborowitz while aiming for another man. 
Gamborowitz's mother, Heidi, said she learned of the yearbook entries from other students who were friends with Adrian, who attended Trinket High School for years and played varsity football and basketball for the Middies before moving and graduating from Lowell High School uh, in 2019. I just felt numb, she says. I couldn't believe this could get by any of the advisors. I don't know how. They didn't catch it. Uh, she has not publicly commented on her son's death before now, though she often posts photos and memories of him on social media. But seeing calls for his alleged shooter to be freed, especially when LeMay is already out of jail on house arrest. That's another story. On house arrest, despite the serious violent charges he faces, prompt her to speak up. I mean, just look at this picture of this kid. Can you guys see his picture? It's a little zoomed out there. Let me make it a little bigger. That kid right there is a douchebag. I can tell just by looking at him. Complete douchebag. So it goes on. Kamborowitz stood in the rain with about 30 family members and friends on Monday night in an effort to confront Drake at public schools administrators on their way to town meeting at the high school. Kamborowitz said she heard from administrators but was not satisfied with the response and wants both a public apology and for at least some of the yearbooks to be reprinted. I want them to give students a choice to return to ones with the reference to LeMay in them and to get new yearbooks. I don't think I'm asking a lot. I think that's completely fair. The son isn't sharing the photos of the yearbook entries or identifying the students involved, but obviously I have no qualms with that whatsoever. Uh, it goes on to say, a spokesperson for DA Marion Ryan said there is no new information she can release about the case. LeMay, charged with armed assault with intent to murder, assault with a dangerous weapon, carrying a loaded firearm without a license, carrying a firearm without a license, and discharging a firearm within 500 feet of a dwelling, was ordered held without bail on October 13th when he was arraigned in Lowell District Court. At a dangerousness hearing, a judge ruled that LeMay was too dangerous to be released pending trial and ordered him held without bail for at least 90 days. Now, upgraded charges have been filed after his death, and LeMay has not been indicted by a grand jury. Though police initially described LeMay as armed and dangerous, 90 days after he was also determined by a judge to be too dangerous to be released in January, his bail was reduced to $50,000 cash. In April, with still no upgraded charges or indictment, LeMay's bail was lowered further to $7,500, with the condition that LeMay remain on continuous house arrest and wear a GPS monitoring device to ensure compliance. LeMay posted that bail and has remained on house arrest since. Heidi Kimborowitz said she has heard LeMay has party with friends at his home as he awaits trial and seen videos of it. Insane. <laughs> and they're protesting Marion Ryan over an imaginary uh, lynching in Hopkinton. Well, here's an actual injustice, but of course, Monica doesn't care. Monica Candy Grant and Black Lives Matter don't care about this because. Wrong skin color, basically. It's heart-wrenching. Uh, LeMay's attorneys, Karen Goldenberg and Stephen Rappaport. Oh, Stephen Rappaport. That's the same douchebag lawyer who represents, um, what's his name there? De Devante Degree. It's represented by Devante Degree. So represent one scumbag, represent them all. Stephen Rappaport. Police reports quote witnesses who say Kim Borowitz was not LeMay's target and that he was only involved because LeMay allegedly knew he was friends with another man who allegedly stole an eighth of an ounce of marijuana from LeMay months earlier. This motherfucker shot someone over an eighth of weed from months earlier. He couldn't get over it. Do you understand what a psychopath you have to be to do something like that? It's an eighth of weed. It costs, well, if you get it in Webster, it's like $30. It costs like $50 worth of shit. And this is insane. An eighth of weed you're going to kill someone over. In madness. I'm just reading this now. Kim Borowitz was just a middleman arranging what he thought was going to be a one-on-one -on -one fist fight between two other men, according to police reports. He said that as he looked at C. Mello, he saw him raise his hand, then point the handgun at them. He said he immediately feared for his life. Um, in an interview with a man who said he was a person who was supposed to fight C. Mello, he told us that C. Mello said nothing. 
He then began to hear shots while simultaneously jumping behind a parked car. He told us that he thought he'd heard five to six gunshots. When the shooting stopped, he heard tires squealing and realized that Adrian was down in the roadway and had been shot. He ran to help Adrian and called 911 from Adrian's cell phone. C. Mello fled the scene before police arrived and was later identified by a witness via an array of photographs according to police reports. And that shit right there, that's LaMelo, that asshole right there, that's LaMelo, he's the shooter, a police report quotes the witness is saying when he saw uh, his photo. This is absolute freaking madness. So these people are out here in the rain protesting for this kid. I mean, this is insane. Free my boy. And I've seen the school's apology. Like, so the, the mother wrote to the school. I went on her Facebook page earlier. The mother wrote to the school and basically said, like, how could this happen? And they responded by saying, I'm really sorry about that. Our, 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 our class advisors allowed this to happen. Uh, they didn't know what it meant. It's like, you didn't know what it meant. You didn't like, he's a kid who went to your high school and he was arrested this year for killing someone. And you didn't know what free mellow meant. Anytime you see free anyone, that's bad news. Nothing good has ever come of like free, unless it's free Ashley Babbitt, like some like or something like, or free the Capitol <laughs> rioters. It's probably somebody who's up to really no good, like a, a, a terrible gang banging douchebag. Free my boy. No one ever good has said free my boy before, ever. So, yeah. So that's that. I mean, so that I'll, I'll probably have a story on that probably coming tomorrow uh, on my last day here. But, yeah, except for free turtle boy, like you said there. Um, so I'll have more on that coming. I really want to see a video of this. If anybody has the video of them partying, I'd like to see that. I'd like to really expose these assholes. I mean, this is a, this sounds. I mean, I just read about this five minutes before the show started. This was not on the topic for tonight. It just came up on my Facebook page. I'm like, I gotta. I don't know. Somebody sent it to me. I'm like, I gotta read this. And I'm like, you gotta be freaking kidding me! Absolutely insane. Absolutely insane. That something like this can happen. This camera angle is pissing me off. Why isn't it showing? Am I sitting the wrong way? Should I sit like this? Is that better? If I go like. I was muted there. Sorry about that, folks. Okay. We're back. We're back. We're back. All right. So let's talk about a couple things here. So all this critical race theory bullshit uh, that we talked about today. Let me pull up uh, a blog that I did today uh, uh, from Belmont. So telling you, your homework turtle riders, if you have kids, please, if you listen to this, if you have kids in the public schools particularly, review their summer reading list. Go on your district's website. It's probably on there. Review it. And if you have anything similar to any of the shit you're going to see tonight, please. For the Suzanne School of IT, yeah. Yeah. Um, if you have anything similar to this, please send it to me. I'd like to see it. I'd like to start documenting this stuff, exposing it as much as possible because they are going to, they're not going to stop this shit and they are going to try to sneak it in under your nose and hope that you don't say anything about it. And we need to stand up to it because they are brainwashing our children and it needs to end. So this is the Belmont public schools. This is what they send home with their students. It says, these books, 
uh, teach about some of the history of racial injustice in our country and attempt to give messages about the advocacy and anti-racist activism that we want to inspire all our, our students. We prioritized sharing books. So right there, the at, give messages about the advocacy and anti-racist activism that we want to inspire in all of our students. Now, I know Belmont is a liberal town, fairly, even though Mitt Romney's technically from there. But anti-racism is a code word for critical race theory. If you see words like that, anti-racist, uh, you know, um, what else do you see on there? You see diversity, equity, inclusion, stuff like that. Uh, that's code. Anti-racist means racist. That's what it means. It means they're trying to push this critical race theory indoctrination bullshit down your kids throats trying to tell them that the most important thing about your child and what makes them a human being isn't the content of their character isn't their social socioeconomic status it is simply the color of their skin their phenotype and this is dangerous it's divisive it's also marxist like in a marxist society communists and the let's start calling these people what they are Communists, racial communists in a communist society, they try to divide you into classes. They say there's the working class, the oppressed, and then there's the owning class, the oppressors. And the working class animal farm must overthrow the oppressors by whatever means necessary. And then we'll, everything will go great. Now that's not how it ends up happening in a communist society, usually what ends up happening is what happens with Black Lives Matter, right? With Black Lives Matter, they've simply substituted working class and, and wealthy for race. White people are the oppressors now and everybody else is the oppressed. Although Asians, there's some middle ground there. But everybody else in general is the oppressed. So they are going to attempt to divide us along those lines as much as possible. And they're going to try to make your kids feel bad if they are white for being white. If your kids are black or brown, they are going to train them to believe that success is out of their hands. That they cannot be anything that they want to be because racism is always going to be an impediment that's going to keep them from being anything in life, from achieving their goals. This boogeyman that is out there will always be stopping them. And they were going, now they realize like, okay, when we get to college, a lot of these kids have formed their own, you know, their own opinions too much. Their parents have raised them. They are attempting to substitute your role as a parent with themselves. See what they're doing here? They're starting them young on purpose. And so when they say, quote, when the Belmont Public Schools say that they are, quote, giving messages, these books give messages about the advocacy and anti-racist activism that we want to inspire in all of our students. Why do you want to inspire that? Not everybody agrees with anti-racist activism. Some of us are just not racist. But to be anti-racist means to be like a constantly talking about race and constantly using race as a crutch and and blindly adhering to this theory of white privilege and all this other nonsense and believing that what defines your child's character and your character as a person and your soul is the color of your skin. That is what they're pushing for here. And why are they training them to be activists at all? Put it this way. This is a left-wing cause. Let's be very clear about that. Anti-racism and Black Lives Matter, these are not neutral things that we can all just agree with. Yeah, yeah, we're all anti-racist. No. You you might call it anti-racist, but that's not actually what the word means. That's not what you're doing. They've branded themselves very well with, you know, Black Lives Matter. Thank you very much, Matter. Uh who's against Black Lives Matter? I believe Black Lives Matter. Sure. Yeah. So who's against that? It's all about branding with these people. So anti-racism, who's against anti-racism? You must be racist. No, 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 no. He just took, that's like taking pedophilia and just like say, well, well, you know, this is, um, 
uh, banning child labor. What are you in favor of child labor? If you're anti-child labor, that means you like to diddle kids. It's like, whoa, 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 whoa. I'm, a, I'm anti-child labor, but I don't diddle kids. You can call it anti-racist all you want, but that's not what you're doing. That's not what you're advocating for. We're not stupid. We see through your bullshit. Now put it this way. The schools are urging these kids to essentially become left-wing activists, right? Well, what if we want to train them to become right-wing activists? Would the schools be pushing for that? Because they always say, we want kids to be activists. We want them to become part of the system. We want them to become, you know, protest when they see something wrong in the community. Well, what if your kid thinks that uh, abortion is wrong, right? Is the school going to urge them to go out and protest against abortion? No, of course not. Nor should they. Because that's not the school's job. What if your kid believes that like guns are an asset, like the second amendment is an essential human right and must be protected at all costs. Are you going to allow them? Are you going to encourage them to go out and become gun anti-gun control advocates? No. Are you going to have them read books about like me and my AR 15? <laughs> no, of course not. Nor should they. Because that's not the school's job. And so the school wants your kid to become an activist as long as it's a left-wing activist. So all this bullshit about like, oh, we want your kids to get out there and become part of the society. No, no, no. We want your kids to be soldiers in our game. And if there was any inclination that they were active, like they were trying to become activists for a cause that they didn't agree with, they would put the kibosh on that real quick. Best believe. So it goes on to say, we prioritize sharing books that can be read by children and adults of all ages. Many of these books demonstrate how kids can be advocates and activists. Many are books that inspire children to feel pride and joy in who they are. But who are they? Not one of these books we're going to see inspires kids to have pride and joy and like, you know, being able to play the piano or having a big family or being a good brother or whatever. None of that stuff is what your child should take pride in. What they mean when they say that your child should feel pride and joy in who they are is they should feel pride and joy in their skin color unless they're white. And in that case, they should feel nothing but shame and guilt. However, they can work to alleviate that by reading some of this literature and becoming an anti-racist activist and then boom, problem solved. We hope this list will inspire discussion and learning among our families. Oh, it's done that. That's definitely some discussion going on. Provide a way to better understand history. Not so much. And encourage us all to better understand each other. This is just the beginning and really only a highlight of the many books we have available on these topics. So these are some of the books that they have. Let's just look at the names of these goddamn books. Let me make this a little bigger, shall we? It says, uh, so counting on community, okay. We're different, we're the same. We're all wonderful, whatever. How about this one? Race Cars, a children's book about white privilege. <laughs> that one doesn't even hide it. A children's book. Why the fuck does my, this was sent home with a kindergartner. Why the hell does my kindergartner Need to learn about white privilege, this abstract theory that some gender studies professor at Clark came up with, some bullshit may, designed to make her feel bad about herself. It's nonsense. Stamped for kids, whatever that means. Let's talk about race. Shocking. Yeah, so we can profit. Whoever wrote that book can make a killing. Let's talk about race. The skin you live in. Awesome. What else we got here? Something happened in our town. We're going to talk about that book in a minute. That's the worst one. Uh, not my idea. A book about whiteness. What the fuck is whiteness? Can anybody tell me what whiteness is? What is whiteness? What does it mean? That to me suggests that there is a, by being white, it, like we all have a characteristic. All white people have the same characteristics. We all have whiteness in this. It makes us a certain way. You know what that's called? Racism. When you say that all all members of a certain race have the same, you know, uh, certain characteristics about them that they all 
have to them. And, and some people believe they're better than others. That's what whiteness, that's what racism is. Whiteness is an example of that. It used to, they love to throw around that word. You know who uses that word a lot? Monica Cannon Grant, which tells you everything you need to know. She's the biggest, you know, racist and biggest racist in Massachusetts. And she uses it, which is all you really need to know. Um, what else we got here? A place inside of me. Well, that sounds inappropriate. Um, we march. Oh, so this is about historical stuff. So this is okay. I have no problem with the historical stuff. Whatever. Um, how about down here? Books calling for activism. A is for activists. How about we just let kids be kids? How about that? Like I read a lot of Matt Christopher <laughs> when I was that age. A little Judy Bloom. You guys read Judy Bloom growing up? Those were fun books. Those were always a good laugh. What was that one book called? Uh, the first Judy. She wrote a bunch of good books. She was funny as hell. She was controversial too. The Hardy Boys, Nancy Drew, Encyclopedia Brown. Like that's what kids are supposed to read. How about the Berenstein Bears? Do they read the Berenstein Bears anymore? The Berenstein Bears never did a thing on racism because <laughs> they were all just bears. That's all. And they lived in a goddamn tree. It was, and they just taught basic morals, basic values. It wasn't that hard. Like don't steal. Be nice to your sister. Like, what is wrong with those values? Teaching kids that kind of stuff. Why do we have to like ruin their youth? Like if I had to read about like how not to be a racist when I was like in how to be an anti-racist when I was like six years old, I'd be like this fucking sucks. I hate learning. I hate reading. I'm not doing it. This is boring as shit. Yeah. Anyway. Um, animal farm. Yeah. Brett would like animal farm a lot. And Brett would also like that other book. What is I always forget. Lord of the flies. That, that seems like Brett's kind of book. Little kids throwing each other off cliffs and shit for survival. Bet he'd like that. What else we got here? Um, Oh, the things we're for, we rise, we resist our voice. We raise our voices. Muslim girls rise. That's great. Kid activists, how to change everything. Stand up, speak up, say something. Awesome. All the colors we are. Books about pride in race, skin color, and heritage. How much you want to bet there's no book about, uh, you know, pride in being white? I'm going to guess none of these are about that. Let's see what they are. Fry bread, whatever that means. Laxmi's mooch. I don't think she's white. The proudest blue. Nope. Apple pie, 4th of July. This is about Chinese girl. Hair love. All the way to America. Okay. Where are you from? Mango Abuela and me. The many shades of love. I mean, why do they need to? It's just nonstop. Do you guys see the messaging here that the Belmont schools are trying to push on kids? Like your race means everything. These are the, all the books of the summer reading list coming together. What do we got on here? Uh, all are welcome. I'm new here. I mean, that's all great and all. Thank you, Omu. Yo, yes, whatever that means. Um, a sandwich swap, which appears to be two girls making out. I don't know. The new kid, Harbor Me, Ugly Vegetables. Yep. So anyway, this is uh, the book about Muslim girls rise. It's got Ilhan Omar on it. Like, regardless of how you feel about this ship whether you're not a Democrat or a Republican, like the school should not be promoting a single, uh, uh, an elected official as like anybody to, to aspire to be because not everybody it's, it's divisive. Not everybody's a Democrat. I don't want my kids to be like Ilhan Omar. I don't think that's somebody to aspire to be Ilhan Omar married her fucking brother. It's there's extensive research on it. That's not like some crazy conspiracy theory. She literally, while she was married to somebody else, like the, she was married to her brother legally. So we get a green card over here. And then, but she was in love with another guy who was like a real husband. And then she got married to him. And obviously the, the brother just did it for the green card. She said a million and one anti-Semitic things before she attacked the covenant kids who were completely innocent. She does. She says outrageous shit. Now, a lot of people agree with that and that's fine. You're entitled to your opinion, 
but the public schools should not be elevating one politician or person or set of, you know, ideals over another. That's not why public schools exist. I would feel maybe like, let me actually hold off on that. I was going to say that I would feel uncomfortable or I would not want the schools to like teach that, you know, my guys are the rest. Like I would like Ron DeSantis to be in a book or Trump, Trump. Put it like that. Imagine Trump was out there like this. Matt Getz. Something like that. A famous, like Jim Jordan. You name it. Ted Cruz. Have them in there. Rand Paul. I'd love to have Rand Paul in there. Or how about Tim Scott? He's black, right? Something like that. I don't know. Rayla Campbell. Throw her in there. I mean, it's going to be hard for Rayla to win because it's Massachusetts, but she's trying at least, right? She's becoming active, but she's active for the wrong reason. So they don't like her, but that's what I was going to say, but I feel like that's playing defensive too much. And I feel like we got to go on offensive. I feel like that's the broke way to go. The woke way to go. In my opinion is yeah, we, st- we should start pushing for that. Have once we take, we, not only should we, the school. So if, if the, it's clear when they take the schools, they're going to push their ideology down your throat. So when we take the schools, if we ever take the schools, why should we not repay them in kind and just brainwash them with right-wing propaganda? You know, if I, like in principle, I should be against that. Right. And I guess I am, but also it's kind of a war at the same time. It's a culture war. So like, that's what they would do with power. So why wouldn't you do the same? I don't know. I'm just thinking out loud here, but anyway, that they're, they're, they're treating this girl. And if you got, I don't, do you guys have kids? So I watch Nickelodeon's always on our house. And there is this freaking commercial that comes on. I could not believe it about Kamala Harris. And like, I didn't know it was about her. It's like, Oh, we rise child. Let me see if I can find it. Actually. Kamala Harris. Nickelodeon. Commercial. So this is the one, yeah. Uh, check this out. Let me play this video for you guys. Can you guys hear that? Once there was a young girl who used her voice to make the world around her a better place. Some say the odds were stacked against her, but her mother had big plans for this little flower. So I didn't know who this was at first. It's like this inspirational commercial about, ooh, big plans for this little girl. Okay, who who's the little girl? What are we talking about? Who had freedom fighting in her blood. She led a successful protest so kids could continue to play. Is that even true? She was not going to let the grass grow under her feet. Okay. She joined a worldwide sisterhood and became part of a divine group of leaders. She rose to places that no woman had. What's that? From front lawn activist to Madam Vice President. Oh my God. She will use her voice to run this nation and inspire it to Kamala Harris making her story and like this is what we're the the message here is clear right kamala harris is good a lot of people don't believe that like 75 million people who did not vote for her actually nobody voted for her people voted for joe biden not her like i couldn't think of anybody that should inspire black girls less than kamala harris like she's probably the least inspirational black woman ever she's barely black She's not African American. She's not. She grew up in Montreal. She went to school in Montreal, wealthy. She went to Howard, a historically black college, basically to kind of like learn how to be black. Like she had no connection to the black community whatsoever. And then she went to law school. She's literally one of the most privileged people on earth. Went to law school. And then 
slept her way to the top. That's what she did. She slept with a guy named Willie Brown. Google it. And rose to prominence. She ran for president in 2020 in the Democratic primary. Didn't even make it to Iowa or New Hampshire because she was polling so badly. In California, her own state, she was like losing to Liz Warren, which is really hard to do. So she dropped out. The only She was actually the leader at one point, like June, because she called Joe Biden a racist multiple times. And she kind of like elevated herself that way. And after that, people started catching on to her, realizing how annoying she was with her stupid fake. I've never seen a faker politician in my life than Kamala Harris ever. And they realized that this woman is not somebody that they want leading their party. And so she dropped out. And then Joe Biden announced, well, my vice president will be a black woman. <laughs> that's it. It's okay. So that all white people, and that's how their party does things. Like, it's like identity is the most important part of being a Democrat is what you look like. And Kamala Harris is a woman and she's, um, you know, darker skinned. So that's why she was chosen. That's literally the only reason that she has this job. She did nothing to earn where she's at. Nothing, 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 nothing. A glass of water with a D next to its name can get elected to the Senate in California. So, and my kids are watching TV and like, this is, they're told like, this is somebody you, you should like, this is good. This is good. Do you ever remember anything like this with like Melania Trump? <laughs> How about an immigrant? You too could sleep your way into the White House. Just pretend you're in love with this, you know, man who's 30 years older than you. <laughs> this reality TV star and you too could be the first lady. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Okay. Uh, so back to the Belmont thing. So Ilan Omar, like you said, this is not somebody that we should be elevating at all. But uh, the most troubling book in this was this book called, uh, what was the name of this book? Uh, Something Happened in Our Town. It's a story of a, a uh, an allegedly unarmed black man who was killed by a white police officer, apparently for no reason. So this is the narrative that we're giving to kids. Black people just killed by white cops for for no reason. There's no gray area here. Just the cops are racist. That's just, they tend to do that. So how are you going to talk to your kids about this? And so here's some quotes in the book. It says, uh, Malcolm, Malcolm added, I could get stopped by the police just because I'm black. Even if I don't do anything wrong. That's not fair. J Jacob said. What if I was a white man? What if a white man, what if it was a white man in the car? Would the police have shot him? They probably would not have even stopped the car, said his father. Sometimes white people are treated better than black people, said his mother. But it's not right. And everybody should be treated fairly. This is just fucking outright lies and propaganda that they are telling to you that they are using fictional literature to brainwash your children with because your kids are going to believe that this is what happens. And it is up to you as a parent to say no. And it is also up to you as a parent when this book is passed out in your class, you fucking raise hell about this shit. You email the principal about it. You email the teacher about it. You demand that this book not be read in class. And if it is, you threaten them with what you're going to do, not physical threaten, Say, I'm going to start a petition. I'm going to raise hell because there's nothing your school fears more than an angry and determined parent. Trust me, I used to be one. I used to be a teacher. Principals are scared of you. They don't want to deal with you. If you're fucking crazy and you present yourself as that, like you're the parent that's not going to go away, they will give in to you. That's how the left gets everything. They just act fucking crazy and they are given everything that they want. So you need to start doing the same thing. 
This is unacceptable for a book like this to be read in the public schools. Eventually you have to take a stand. Here's another thing. But he won't go to jail, said his father, the cop. Why not, asked Josh. Cops stick up for each other, said Josh's brother Malcolm. And they don't like black men. Jacob, Josh was confused. Why not? Some police are black. You're right, said his mother. Uncle James, and so is my friend Kenya. Her friend Kenya, yeah. Uh, there are There are many cops, black and white, who make good choices, said his father. But we can't always count on them to do what is right. This is a great message to teach you. It's a great message. In another house, Josh asks his mother, can police go to jail? Yes, said his mother. Why do you ask? That white policeman who shot the black man to Josh, will he go to jail? What he did was wrong. Okay. And then here's the White House. The White House is even better. So the White House has a little girl and then her her cunty liberal older sister who thinks she knows everything and is the voice of reason here. So after school, Emma asked her mother, why did the police shoot that man? It was a mistake, said her mother. I feel sad for the man and his family. Yes, the police thought he had a gun, said her father. It wasn't a mistake, said her sister Liz. The cops shot him because he was black. Nowhere, and again, up above, when this other kid said that uh, the cops stick up for each other, they don't like black men, at no point did the, the parent correct them and say, no, 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 that's not true. It's like, no, no, the cops shot him because he was black. Emma was confused. He is brown, not black, she said. Some black people have dark brown skin and some have light brown skin. Like, what the fuck are we teaching kids? This is insane. Now, here's the best part. This Here's the best part. My favorite chapter of this book. It says, um, did our family do bad things a long time ago? Asked Emma. Yes. Yes, answered her mother. Back then, many white people thought that they were better than black people, even though it wasn't true. So this is it is your fault. Like, what do you mean it was our like so her ancestors owned a plantation? Is that what you're saying? You know what percent of white people own slaves in antebellum society? Not many. <laughs> Not many. Slaves were for rich people that could afford them. They were not free. They cost money. Your average white trash person in Arkansas or Louisiana or Tennessee did not own slaves, which made the whole thing fucking ironic, the Civil War, that all these white trash people who plantation owners looked down upon, these mountaineers and these idiots with no money, they're the ones going out and dying for this stupid cause that they'll never be able to enjoy the fruits of slavery. The only reason that they took any pride in this poor Southern whites is because it was a class thing. Because if, if slaves were free, then they would be just poor people too. And they would be equal to them almost. And that's what resentment. It was racial resentment. They were like, no, I don't want them to be equal to me. I'm better than them. I'm I have to be better than somebody. On uh, you know, on the white people scale, I'm at the bottom of the totem pole. So I got to be better than somebody. Oh, I'm better than them. And that's all it was. And they were willing to literally die for that, which is fucking crazy. Fucking crazy. Oh my god. Couldn't imagine living in Tennessee during the Oh, I'm going to go die for what? <laughs> nah. <laughs> Nah, I'm good. Nah, I'm good. You go you go fight. I'm going to stay back here. I'm going to bang your girlfriend while you're gone. That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> I'd be that guy. I'm going to bang your girlfriend while you're going to go die at Gettysburg. Have fun for slavery. Good luck with that. <laughs> I'll be here. And then when the union comes through, I'm going to surrender. I'm going to be waving that flag. I'm going to be waving an American flag real quick. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So I don't know how I got into that rant, but 
the bottom line here is you got to keep an eye out for this bullshit. It's going to be inf- infiltrating your kid's school everywhere. Um, watch out for it. All right. Um, what else did it's I have on the agenda? Oh, no. Your- All right. Um, I have another story. So the mass GOP drama real quick that people wanted to get it. To, I don't know. Or anyway, why don't we just take questions since we don't, since I'm not going to be here for a week, open the floor to you guys. Anything you guys want to talk about turtle riders choice. Go ahead. Fire away tomorrow. I will be doing my last live stream before I go away for turtle club, but you need to sign up for that again. If you're, if you're not a member of turtle club, how you can join. Actually, I can just go and, uh, So this is uh, on TV Daily News or on Turtle Boy Sports. At the top there, there's a thing called Turtle Club. And you can sign up for it. Uh, $10 a month, you get ad-free. $15 a month, you get ad-free and access to the streams. $25 a month, you get access to the streams. And I'm going to do a weekly members-only blog like I did uh, earlier this week. Um, and then, yeah, there's a couple other ones where you can have like your own advertisement, a banner up for a couple weeks, something like that. So check them out. That's how you can, uh, become a member of turtle club. Yes, I will get receipts. Can we do a turtle boy childhood, uh, book list? Yeah. Something like it. Maybe. Uh, mass GOP drama sucks. Yeah. I mean, the, the whole thing, it's embarrassing. It's so cringe. The mass GOP drama. It's just like, they wanted me to get involved in it and like write about it. I'm like, I don't even think my readers care at all. Like I, I don't, there's nobody less relevant right now than the mass GOP. They are run by idiots. I mean, if I was running the mass GOP, that'd be enough. That'd be one thing. It would be a lot more efficient. We would get shit done. But basically all the mass GOP does is raise money and employ like 10 people. And then they just talk about Democrats and they mock Democrats and they own the libs. Uh, but I don't think they, they don't do anything. Thank you. Adjust me, Brett. I will have an itemized deduction for my uh, vacation stat. That's correct. It's coming your way, but they don't actually do anything. Like the Democrats do things. They get people elected to office. They actually want institutional control. Republicans just want to like own the libs. That's all they want to do. So yeah, this is the whole drama that's going on in the Republican party in Massachusetts right now. There is a man running against Jim McGovern. His name is, um, Jeffrey. I want to say Sosa Paquette. I met him at the, um, in Hopkinton. Seems like a nice enough guy. He's gay. Uh, he's married and he has two adopted kids. All right. And he's running against Jim McGovern, which means one thing. He's going to lose. He seemed like a nice guy. I'll vote for him. But, like, he's going to lose. They're all going to lose. Unless you gerrymander and redo the districts, they're specifically set up so that no Republicans can win. Okay? The fix is in. No amount of messaging can change that. The Democrats have an easy majority in every single district. The district that is closest to a Republican win, the it would be the Cape Cod one that goes down to New Bedford. That's Bill Keating's district. And he won with 60%. That's as close as you're going to get, 60-40, period. After that, it would be like, um, I don't even know what the next closest one, the Seth Moulton district, maybe. Um, but yeah, I mean, the Ayanna Presley one's the least touchable one, the Suffolk County one. But the the Lori Trahan one's untouchable. The Catherine Clark one's untouchable. The Richie Neal one's untouchable. Jim McGovern one's untouchable. So this guy's running. He's gay. And there was some woman, I guess, that made a comment. Her name is Deb Martell. I don't know who the hell she is. I guess she's involved in Mass GOP. I don't follow any of this shit. But she made a comment about him, like, not owning or not, like, you know, adop- adopting kids, right? It was like Republicanism from 20 years ago, like being against gay marriage and adopting kids, whatever. And I don't agree with that. I think I think it's fine if gay people adopt kids. I really don't care. It doesn't bother me. They're, they're better home than a lot. Of being, better than being Kate Peters heterosexual home. I'll tell you that much. It's one thing I've learned from being Turtle Boy. So I don't care, but a lot of the, like a lot of these um Republicans now have, have demanded that this woman resign 
and Jim Lyons, who heads the mass GOP, and by the way, is like chummy with Luke Noble, a guy who's accused by his own children of sexual abuse. That's not cool. And Jim Lyons is not firing this woman because he doesn't believe in cancel culture. And so they all want him to resign. It's turning into this whole fucking shit show. And I just don't care about any of it because they're like, oh, yeah, who cares? I mean, if Jeffrey Sosa Packett gets not, who cares? He's going to lose. Doesn't matter. No matter who you run, they're going to lose. So who cares? There's only one way to win as a Republican in the state, and it's to become Charlie Baker. That's it. And you're not really a Republican when you do that. That's the only way to win. Sorry. Hate to break it to you people. Don't like it. Leave Massachusetts. There's a whole country out there, and it's fucking great. My brother just moved to Texas. I wish I could do that. That would be awesome. I'd love to live in Dallas. I'd love to move to Tennessee, right? Or South Carolina or North Carolina. Hell, even Georgia, Florida, a little hot in Florida, but something like that. There's a whole country out there, man. It's not like this everywhere else. We are the most liberal state in the country. Us, California, and Hawaii are the three most liberal states in the country. You don't want to, and at least the other two states have nice weather. What's our excuse? I don't know. We have to stop supporting all the rhinos. We'll suffer for a little. But what does that mean? I'm, I'm kind of sick of the word rhino. That's what everybody always, oh, the rhinos. Who the fuck are the rhinos? People are calling Jim Lyons a rhino. Everybody you don't like is a rhino in the Republican Party. Who's not a rhino? You tell me. Who's not a rhino? Republican in name only. People, they love to throw this word out there. Oh, he's a rhino. What the fuck does that, who? Who's a rhino? I don't even know who the fuck the rhinos are. Every Republican who, who's that? Give me one. I mean, Baker. Okay. Baker's a rhino, but people are calling Jim Lyons a rhino. Jim Lyons wouldn't fire this woman for being against gay marriage. That's pretty goddamn traditional Republican. And they're calling him a rhino. So who's what? Who? It's just a word that these people like to use to yell at each other and fight with each other. Asa Hutchinson. Yeah, I guess so. Mitt Romney's a rhino for sure. Mitt Romney's a rhino. Lisa Murkowski's a rhino. Susan Collins is a rhino, but it's forgivable because she's from a blue state. Yeah, Lyons is not allegedly a rhino, but they're calling him one. They're like, he's a rhino. He should resign. It's just people love to use it. Ted Cruz is a rhino. Are you fucking crazy? See, this is what I mean. This is when the rhino word loses all value. Ted Cruz? is like the the definition of a Republican. John F. Kennedy, you're talking about John Kennedy, the Louisiana senator? He's a rhino? Are you crazy? Yeah, I'm, oh, I'm definitely a rhino. I'm sure they're calling me a rhino. Of course, they're, 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 Turtle Boy's a rhino. I'm a fucking, whatever that means. John Cates is a rhino for sure. Adam Kinzinger, he's a rhino. People like that are. Ted Cruz is a rhino. Are you fucking crazy? Then how about this? Bong hits. Who's not a rhino? You tell me. Who's not a rhino in our party? You tell me. Yeah. He's hilarious, right? John Kennedy's hilarious. He's great. See, Brett doesn't like politics. Brett, you gotta I got I thought I got you into politics, man. Uh oh, who is not a rhino? Oh, thank you. I apologize, Cherokee girl. Okay, I apologize. Ted Cruz, yes. He's the opposite of a rhino. You're right. Call he's a rhino, yeah. Yeah, I agree. Those are two of the best right there. I agree. All right, any other questions you guys have? Fire away. Anything else you want to talk about? I mean, Rand is like a, a libertarian. He's not a full libertarian because like, or else I wouldn't like him. But he's got a, a libertarian streak to him, but he's a Republican. Rand is really good. Yeah, John Kennedy's awesome. Um, let's see. You see the SJC decision in favor of Minahan and Barstool. I love it. <laughs> That's like the third time they've won in court against this fucking loser. Not enough is being made with that lawsuit. That should have been like front page news. Like Joe Curtatoni should be ashamed and embarrassed that he sued 
Kirk Minahan because he was stupid enough to believe that he was talking to Kevin Cullen, the disgraced Boston Globe columnist, for 20 minutes on the phone. This fucking idiot gave an interview to Kirk, and he thought he was talking to Kevin Cullen. <laughs> and then he sued, claiming he was like wiretapped or something. But it's like, but you knew you were being interviewed. You're just too retarded to uh, you know figure that out on your own. Any word? I just put that blog out. M job. Any word on IDing the guy who occupied four handicap spots? I'm getting some messages about it, so I expect to have that tonight. What happened with Big Black Jeffrey in court? There was a huge line, and I had to pick my daughter up at 2:45. So I'm like, uh, unless we can cut the line and go first, we're gonna have to reschedule this, and, and that's what we ended up doing. Oh, good news with the Ashley St. Angelo thing, because of your donations, attorney Mark Randaza got that um got our lawsuit got that not lawsuit got the order removed out of rhode island superior court private superior court and into federal court because we're i'm across state lines now anytime i get sued by someone in rhode island it should be in federal court not some kangaroo court run by some fake judge like melissa derrigan so melissa derrigan we're done with her i never have to see that cunt again I can say that now. I could say that before too if I wanted to, and I did. But I have never seen a more incompetent, cunty judge than her. And fuck you, Melissa Darrigan. We win. So it's not dismissed yet, but we'll actually have a, a, a regular judge. Like, no judge would ever humor this. No, it's insane that this judge is humoring this. I assume now federal court judge who's like serious is just going to look at this and be like what <laughs> Lester school committee racism presentation but I don't know what you're talking about yeah I don't I don't do baseball done with baseball monica's in denim is she going to move there yeah that is bad news for saint angela i mean the only reason laura this was even happening being dragged out is because this judge is allowing this circus to continue every other judge with a harassment order you guys heard the bristol Bar blarney one in court that was a harassment order hearing they hear it that day they're like so do you have evidence of harassment she doesn't the guy's like okay dismissed see you later that's all you have to do and i I assume any other judge would do that except for Melissa Darrigan. Drake at high school graduation, uh, the school superintendent made a great speech about big tech and first amendment rights. Ooh, I'll have to maybe see that. Oh, that was hockey. That was hockey, Tampa Bay. So who's winning that one? Tampa Bay is beating the Islanders. Okay, that makes me feel better. Yeah, I think he's lying. So uh, I didn't really get a chance to look into it. I kind of believed it at first because it's just a crazy story. But the more I hear about it, he has no witnesses. He got swallowed by a fucking whale. Come on. No fucking way. No way. I don't believe it. Now, there has not been... Uh, a, you can't do an autopsy on ashes. That's the problem. Yeah, the Islanders. So, hey, sport ball. I mean, I'm not watching. Now that the Bruins are out of it, I'm just a casual fan at this point. I mean, I I'm, I'm I hope Vegas wins at this because I definitely don't want Montreal to win. Obviously, I'm happy to beat Toronto, but chill out with Montreal. Definitely don't want the Islanders to win. I think they suck. I hate the lightning. So you got to go for Vegas, man. That'd be a cool story. It'd be fun to go to a Vegas hockey game. Like it's 116 degrees in Vegas right now. And they're playing hockey. That's awesome. So go Vegas. Uh, and, and basketball, man, I'm not watching the NBA, but I kind of wish it was into the NBA this year because for the once it's like, like the douchebag teams, the super teams are falling apart. LeBron's out. The the Nets are falling apart. 
I love to see the Bucks break through. They're the new favorite to win it all. I'd like to see the Bucks break through. I'd like to see them play. Um, I mean, the Sixers lost to the Hawks last night. So I think we, we're probably gonna have Sixers against I'd like Sixers Bucks would be awesome. And I'd like to see the Bucks win that. And then in the West, man, how awesome would a Phoenix Utah finals like, that'd be fucking awesome. That'd be really cool. And I'd like to see Phoenix. I'd like to see Chris Paul get a ring. But I'm not again, I'm not gonna watch the NBA. But in theory, I'd like to see a Bucks Suns finals. That would be cool. The Nets are getting smoked right now. <laughs> awesome. Fuck them. Fuck that bitch ass Kyrie Irving. Could it, imagine they don't even make the conference finals? <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, the story out of Dedham's getting interesting. People are starting to um uh the family of the kid is protesting out there. I do have something coming on that, but I'm gonna see if that escalates a little more first. What does it say? How about Durant's personal bodyguard storming the court and trying to fight a guy in the Bucks? I did not see that. Was that in Milwaukee? I did not see that. All right. Anybody else have any other questions? Before we call it an evening. Yes, he he I don't know if he drowned. I don't know it hasn't been ruled how he died yet, you know. I heard he was asthmatic. I, I don't know the whole story with this kid. But I'm sure I, I'm shocked Monica Candy Grant hasn't uh done anything with that yet. Um where did I I'm going on vacation. We're going to Montana. We are going to Glacier National Park in northwestern Montana near like the Idaho and Canadian borders. So that should be fun. Never. Uh, that's my kind of vacation. You guys know that. I don't like the commercial shit, beaches, stuff like that. I've been there, done that before. I want to see the world, man. I want to see the country. Beautiful country out there. I'd like to see it all. You see, uh, let's see. Vince Wilfork's son was arrested for stealing his father... The fuck? His his son's old enough to do that? That's crazy. Yeah, Coeur d'Alene is not that far. It's not that far from us. It's in like that northern part of Idaho. What difference does what make? I don't know, I get the question. They're just wrong part of the state, man. South Dakota is like, like 10 hours away. I want to see the Grand Fanny too. That'd be cool. How tough is Tonetti tough? Oh, I'd love to get those guys on the show. But again, I'm going away. I'd love to do it. Okay. Any other questions, guys, before we call it an evening? Give you a minute. All right, folks. So I'll see some of you guys for Turtle Club tomorrow night at 9 o'clock. Everybody else, we'll see you in nine days for the next Thursday night live stream. All right? Peace out, Aratus.